Hello, mate. In this video, we are going to look at creating a new light setup HDRI, and we're going to do that using this character here. Before I get started, a huge thank you to everybody for subscribing and hitting that notification icon. That really helps me out. And of course, an even bigger thank you to the members and patrons. Your names will be running across the screen at the end of the video. Incidentally, if you are interested in supporting the channel, you can do so by visiting the Patreon in the description down below. Or you can become a member by hitting the join button next to the subscribe button just below this video. So let's jump into this then. So what I want to do is I want to create a unique light setup specifically for taking portraits of characters, perhaps for the purposes of shooting the little side images that you get in the bottom of a game, or maybe just something a bit interesting for promo shots. So what, but what I want to do is I want to be able to create it as an HDRI, which will enable me to load it quickly without having meshes and stuff in the screen. So what we need to do first is we need to switch over into NVIDIA IRA mode like so. And what we can do is we can wait for that to quickly load. What we can see is that she's currently lit by an HDRI, which ironically we don't need. So what we're going to do is in our render settings like this, we're going to go to environment and we're just going to switch from dome and scene to scene only. And then as you can see, lo and behold, our character has disappeared. So we're now going to jump back into texture shaded mode. And we're going to start adding some lights in here. I'm going to use mostly planes as my light sources, but you can use pretty much any surface you want. It's entirely up to you. You can do it all with spotlights and things like that, but it's just easier doing it the way I'm about to do it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this object button here that looks like three shapes smushed together. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to see plane and I'm going to make my plane two meters. And it's only going to have one division and we're going to hit accept like so, there's our first source. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and get the modeling light on the shoulders and the top of the hair, so a hair light basically. So what we need to do is first things first, you need to drag this object, this shape up, and we're going to make some adjustments to it. First things first, it is way too uh, fat this way, so we're gonna shrink it down on the Z scale. I'm gonna make it about 30% on the Z scale like that. That's a lot better, a lot closer to what I'm after. Now I'm gonna come down to the surfaces tab here and I'm just gonna expand all of these. And where it says emission, I'm gonna change my emission color to white. In fact, I'm gonna give it a slightly bluish hue as well, because I think that might look a bit interesting. I'm gonna switch from CD over M squared to KCD over M squared, there we go. And now if we jump into our NVIDIA IRO mode, after a few seconds of attempting to load, we should see our character's hair and shoulders have been lit, and I'm fairly happy with that. I think maybe I need to move it back slightly and increase the intensity a little bit, but all things considered, that is not a bad place to start. So we know that it's a Z scale. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try minus 100, see what that does. That's a little bit better. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come back into my surfaces tab and I'm going to turn up the luminance. I'm going to turn it to about 3000. See what that does. There we go. That gives us a really nice outline around the shoulders. I'm really quite happy with that, to be honest. That's pretty damn good. Pretty dang good. Cool. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to add some kind of um, main light over top on the left hand side here. So we will again, we'll jump back into texture shaded mode and we're going to create a new plane keep all the same parameters and we're going to just select that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move this across over this way and we're going to move it up if we can get hold of the dang arrow. There we go. There we go. So let's rotate round. We'll select this and we're going to rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees. And then we're going to slide it back so that it's round about here. And then we're going to rotate it on the Y axis. There we go, we we'll use the rotate tool and we'll just swing it around so that it's actually pointing toward our character. And now we need to shrink it so we can use our scale tool and we can shrink it down along that axis there until it's about the size we want it to be. This is gonna be a fairly bright light and it's gonna have a slightly yellowish tinge to it, I think this time. So what we do is come into our surfaces tab. We're gonna expand this one as much as we want there. 
come to emission now turn this on to white and then we're going to give this one a slightly yellow issue to hit OK then we're going to come back into Nvidia IRA preview mode this is a bigger light source and it's more pointing straight at the character so we shouldn't need to adjust the brightness on this too much we should be able to just swing this round like this and then see what it's doing there you go so as you can see there is a slight adjustment that we need to make and it is giving us a little bit of um reflection there at the moment but when we turn it on to kcdmr2 you can see that that's actually quite bright and it's a little bit too yellow so what we need to do is come down in the saturation a tiny bit probably about that much there like that now that's quite also quite apparently bright so i'm going to switch this down to about 750 and see what happens yeah it's okay it's okay I feel like maybe it needs to move slightly. So let's just bring this with our move tool. Okay, let's select our other light source. We're gonna go to our emission. I actually want the saturation to be slightly higher on this light source, slightly bluer, so that we can see a more definitive contrast between the two light sources. So let's have a look and see how that pans out. We've now got a very clear blue, a nice yellow there. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a, another light source behind the character. So we'll come back to texture shaded mode, create a new plane, same parameters again. This time we're gonna drag it just, just behind her. We're gonna rotate on the Z axis, on the X axis again, sorry. So we're gonna do that, gonna hit okay. Make sure that we're there to this. In fact, yeah, that's fine. And then we can switch to NVIDIA IRA mode again. And it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to make this out because the light source is behind her. We're not gonna be able to spot the highlight around her as much or as easily as you can see. But we can see that it's definitely there. It's fine. It's fine. Okay, so now we've got a nice outline around her. We've got this guy is our main light. Now all we're gonna do is we're gonna add a really small fill light to this area here just to bring some detail into those shadows again. So all we have to do is one last time, come back into texture shaded mode, create one last light source, like so. And we're gonna just come around like so. Again, 90 degrees like that. We're gonna make this one smaller, but what we're gonna do is bring it up first so that it's more or less central to our body. There we go. And then we're gonna scale this to about 35% thereabouts, like so. Then we can come to our surfaces, change the emission color to white. And we're gonna drop the luminance down to about 300. We don't want it to be overpoweringly bright. We just want it to add some details in the shadow. So now we come back to NVIDIA IRA preview mode one last time. As you can see, that's just throwing some detail into those shadows. And if we're not happy with the position, we can just drag it up bring it up to about here so that it's more level with her face. So whilst I am looking at the body, I'm mainly concerned with how the face is lit because when the viewer looks at this photo, they're gonna be more concerned with the face. I mean, that's kind of the point of a portrait. So that's where the camera is gonna be when we turn this into an HDRI more importantly. And I'm just making sure that I'm satisfied that the character is thoroughly lit and it doesn't look too boring. Now, I personally think this light source could do with being a little bit narrower. So again, I'm going to select my scale tool and I'm just gonna shrink it along the x-axis a little bit more down by about that much, just because I want a little bit more contrast in the image and a smaller, harder light source will achieve that nicely. And it'll also dim the light a little bit on there. Cool. Okie doke, so this is a fairly basic light setup, it's four lights, realistically the back one doesn't need to be there, I mean if I turn it on and off, let's select it in the scene, if I were to turn that on and off in the scene, you wouldn't notice a huge amount of difference, so if, let's say for argument's sake, we wanted to just leave that one out and have the three lights that we've got. Next thing we need to do is create our camera, so what we're going to do is hit the new camera button, which is the first button on the toolbar that looks coincidentally like an old school camera, hit that. We're just going to apply default settings for now. We're going to jump into texture shaded mode. And then we're going to go into our parameters. All I'm going to do is I'm going to set X to zero, Z to zero, X rotate to zero, Y rotate to zero, and X rotate to zero. I'm going to drop down the Y translate until it's more or less central to our character's head, which is around about there. 
and I'm going to turn our character off. Boom. Like that. Okay, so now we've got some more adjustments to make. What we need to do is go to the lens and we can set our lens distortion type to spherical, like so. And now it comes to the render settings. We're going to come up to our render settings and we're going to go to progressive rendering. No, we're going to go to tone mapping. What I want to do is set the, the HDRI up so that we have a three very, very different exposures. So let's say that 128 is our mid. So 128 shutter speed is going to be our mid. Next thing we need to do is get into the camera and do it correctly. <laughs> that was my bad. Let's try that again. Now we're in the camera. Now we should see correctly. I was seeing the back of the shapes and all that's just, yeah, me being a bonehead. As you can see, now we're seeing the shapes that we're supposed to be seeing like so. So we can call that one mid, hit save. It's gonna say, do you wanna overwrite? Yes, cool. Now we're gonna come back to our exposure settings. And as I said before, we need this to be a pretty extreme uh, exposure difference. So I'm gonna set this to, normally it would go 128, 250, 500, 1000. So I'm gonna say 1000 there is gonna be our new value. And I'm gonna hit render. And then we're going to see what we get for this one. There we go. There's our blue. It's, there's our blue. There's our back. And there's our front. So as you can see, they're a little bit darker. So now we can say this one is low one. And we'll hit save. And then the next one I'm going to do is going to be four thousandths of a second. Hit render again. And we should very quickly see those shapes. Now we can see the color of that one as well. And we can see that they're not very uh, heavily exposed now. See, again, that one's gone nice and dark now. What we're seeing is basically the different levels of exposure. So we'll say low two for this one. Once the once all of them start going gray, that's where we know what we've done. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to open a notepad window. And I'm going to type in my exposure value. So one, two, eight. Then we went to 1,000. Then we went to 4,000. Now I'm gonna to go to 16 thousandths of a second, which is insanely fast, which, but it is something that we can do in DAS, so it's all good. Nice and quickly, our render pops out, and there we go. Now you can see the colors really are starting to show through on our HDRI, so I'm pretty happy with that one as being our lowest exposure, so let's call that one low three, and we'll save there. I'll remember to put 16,000 in my text file. Now we need to go the other way. So we went 125 to 250, so that's once doubled. 250 to 500, that's twice doubled. And then 500 to 1,000, that's three times doubled. So what we need to do is go the other way. So from 1 to 8, it would go 60, 30, then 15. So we're going to go to 15th of a second as being our first higher exposure. Now, at this point, I'm expecting all of our light sources to just be plain white, or at least very close to it, so we'll find out momentarily. As you can see there, we have white and white and white. So we'll call this one high one. We're going to save that. And I'm going to write down, I'm going to append to the top of my list 15. And then all we're going to do is we're going to go 15, seven and a half to three. So we're going to go one third of a second and just render it out one more time just to be absolutely sure that we get as broad a spectrum as possible. There we go. All white again. Save this as high two and we'll go to save. Nice and simple. Next, we're going to come into Photoshop and what we want to do is go to automate and merge to HDR Pro. As you can see, we now have a choice that we can put files into. Once we've hit browse, we can go into our render folder and select all of the renders that we've just done. There we go. So that's all of our files selected. Now we have to do now is hit OK. And now it's going to ask us to tell it what exposure settings were for each one of these. There we go. Now it's asking us which one's which. So mid, we know that that was 1 over 128 or 125 according to this. And it was at F8. ISO was 100. Next thing we're going to do is low three. So that's our absolute lowest. If we look at that, so we know that it was actually a 16,000. So unfortunately, we don't have an option to, to select it. So we have to go one 
over 16,000. And then we can go to OK. Image uh, low two was one over 4,000. That's fine. Next, we know that a low one was one over 1,000, which we can select. Then we have high two, which was one third of a second. So we just go one over three. And high one we know was one over 15, like that. And we hit OK. Now it's going to create us a really nice HDRI looking image. And we can drag up and down the exposure and we can actually see how bright this image is going to be, which is fine. That's cool. Happy day. So now we're just going to check. We can adjust this. If we drag this all the way up, we can actually adjust the gamma up and down to increase our contrast. So we get gamma of minus 999. And then that gives us a little bit more of a realistic, you know, so the background, when we brought the exposure up previously, the background was going gray with us and we don't want that. So we can just leave that as it is now. We can set our exposure down to zero and we're just going to hit OK. And lo and behold, it has created an HDRI for us. It's going to have to do a little bit more thinking, give it some time. So now that we've got our HDR made, what we need to do is we need to come to image mode and we need to make sure that you change, if it hasn't already done it, your image mode to 32 bits per channel. Yours will probably be 16, so switch to 32 bits per channel. Then what you can do is you can go to file, save as, and then it will come up with a dialogue. You can give your file a name and remember in the save as a file type to change it to radiance which will have .hdr, .rgbe, .xyze after it. So that will create our HDR image. So I'm just going to give mine a name. And then you'll see Photoshop will save it nice and quickly. And then we can close down Photoshop and come back into Daz Studio. Now what we want to do is we're going to hide all of these planes, like so. We can reintroduce our character into the scene remembering that we're in the camera so we're going to appear, appear inside our head we'll just get rid of that and we can hide the camera from view now we can come back to our render settings and in our environment we're going to change our environment mode back to dome and scene and we're going to change our environment map to the file that we just created and if we look if we have a draw dome turned on you can see that we're actually about 90 degrees out, which is why we're probably getting some weird looking results. So if we look up to where we can see that shape there, we need it to be about minus 90 degrees. So let's change our dome rotation to about 270. There we go. And now it's now the light sources are where they're meant to be. And that would undo the, um, as you say, you probably thought, well, that looks crap. But that's because our lights weren't all in the right place. And so now when we come back to the front here, we can see that we're getting much closer to what we wanted. Intensity is still a little bit low, so let's argue the toss and let's just change it up a little bit more. And as you can see, we're a lot closer now to where we were. Our light sources are now embedded in the HDRI, which means that they will can be consistent every time we load them. We won't have to worry about accidentally moving objects or anything like that. So there you go. Thanks very much for watching that, guys. I hope you found that useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I will see you in the next one. But until then, you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye.